Um, as she mentioned, I mean, messaging is one of the oddest things. It, it, it's actually older than the web, and even in the electronic world, predates the web, ICQ, AIM, lots of messaging. Bulletin boards. Bulletin boards, and it kind of languished for a long time. It was there, even SMS on your phones, all these things. And then, magically, in the last two, three, four years, it exploded and went from being amazingly boring to being really, really exciting to a lot of people. Um, I think one of the great things about Glide is that you guys are really pushing the tech, I and mean, the reason you're here today really is that you guys are pushing the technology in ways that were both inconceivable and practically impossible until fairly recently. And so I wanted to just, you know, talk a little bit about that and then put a particular spin on the marketing aspect. Because again, I mean, messaging and marketing really didn't have much to do with each other for quite a long time. Now the possibilities are starting to get, I think, interesting. And so we'll go into a little of that. Um, just by way of background, I'll do your ad for you. Glide is based in Jerusalem, three years old, raised about $30 million right. in capital, and now has offices in Palo Alto, New York and, and Jerusalem. So they're on, on the move. And I guess my first question would just be, you know, this is there's a crazy big space right now. You've got, I just made a quick WhatsApp, Messenger, Skype, Snapchat, Instagram, uh, on and on, kick. Why do you guys think, what do you bring to the party? What is, what's, what's Fly's contribution? Well, really what the main difference is that we're focused from the ground up on creating a, a video solution. We believe that the best way for two people to communicate is face-to-face -face communication. It's the reason why most of you are here today. It's the reason why people fly from one side of the planet to the other side of the planet for business meetings. When you see another person speak in their first language, uh, not limited by any type of characters, you can connect with them and you can really understand what they're saying so much more than 160 characters or any type of emoji. So whereas we see that all other messaging products really came to allow people more ways to either send text or and then we expanded into photo, nobody really cornered the market on video messaging. And that, like you said, was a technical problem. Well, how do you differentiate video messaging from Skype or FaceTime? That's, that's a great question. So on one end we have calling, where I ring you up and you have to stop what you're doing in the real world and then hop on the call with me and we have a clear start and stop time. With messaging, the conversation is much more fluid. I can send you an SMS or a text message or even a photo. You can consume that immediately in real time or you can consume it later. And that was really the paradigm that we brought to video messaging. We don't want to be a video call. We want to be an instant video message. If you're available to watch it in real time, you can watch it but you don't need to. Are there time constraints on any of this? Yes, so we limit each of our messages to five minutes, but That's you can send as many as five, you want. Five minutes of video is a lot. Yeah, but it, what it does is it allows people to express themselves without the constraint of something like a 30 second message or even a 10 second message. And you can rewatch the message as many times as you want, so you never have that fear of missing out. Um, ads, marketing, how, how, do, how do you see that progressing, I mean, you, I think you've been said no ads, we're not doing ads. Yes, we don't have any ads, but we do see the space for brands to use the power of video and face-to-face -face communication to develop intimate relationships with their customers, with the, the consumers and users of their products. Isn't that just kind of like sending them a commercial? Uh, well, then it's about con contextualization. If it's something that's general, I feel like it's a billboard, a video billboard that's being sent to me, then it's not personalized. But if it's actually contextual to who I am, where I am, what I'm doing, then it feels like it's a message to me, and then thus it builds my relationship with the other organization. And how do you do that? I mean, one-to-one -one marketing is very expensive. How do you, how do you, or I must have, well, AI. Absolutely, I think that that's really where we're seeing, you know, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about the evolution of messaging here. So, from new methods of communication like video, and then also complementary technologies like artificial intelligence, 
really are going to couple together to solve these scalability problems of creating unique personalized experiences for consumers. You guys are, you've got an Apple Watch on and I think you fair to say you guys are bullish about wearables. Oh, we're very excited about, specifically about the Apple Watch and about wearables in general. It's very interesting to see as people move farther and farther away from a dedicated brick in their pocket. App, the, the, app, the Glide app runs on an Apple Watch. Is, yep. it, is it different from the desktop or other mobile apps? I mean, it, or is the Apple Watch one unique? So we were actually the first company that uh, built a native video player for the Apple Watch. So we can actually play Glide video on the watch. And we're very excited about 2016 as more players come into the wearable but space. But it doesn't have a camera. So how do you do a two-way? Just, just you wait. There'll be a camera on your wrist sooner than you think. And, and so I'm gonna, like right now, if, 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 if somebody, if, if your thing were to ring right now and your wife was there from Jerusalem, what would happen? You, her face would pop up on so Her face would pop up and I would be able to press play and I could watch the video and then I can respond back with either a uh, pre-recorded message or an audio message. Is it real time also? Yeah, and you can have real time streaming from a, a wearable device. Uh, ooh, speaking of real time, um, I'm noticing we don't have a clock here, guys, so unless you want us to go on for the next hour and a half, uh, we need to get a clock. But, okay. Um, uh, what, I mean, what, okay, so AI is one of the pieces that you see coming in. Well, I see also uh, with the adoption of e-commerce within the messaging space, it opens up a whole new uh, frontier, really, for brands and companies to be able to market, to direct marketing to well, individuals. Yeah, speaking of, let's look around. I mean, Snapchat Discover. Oh, that's, that's a great example. example. What, what do you think about what they're doing? Uh, so I really like Snapchat Discover. I think that it's a great way to consume Explain content. Explain what Snapchat Discover is just for the people who Oh, so basically, if you swipe, I guess that's to the left, then what you get is a whole array of different companies that are creating content that you can watch. So I could watch MTV, I could watch uh, a couple other things that historically I would have watched on an actual television. Now I can watch on my mobile phone. So it, it's really a focus on content discovery. And what's the advantage of doing that in a messaging environment? I think it, uh, it answers the question of how do you use the product when you don't have anyone to talk to? So it's a, a complementary, uh, almost side project within the application. Um, what's some other things that interest you in the messaging space? Are there other people doing interesting things that you see for us with, with a marketing? So I think that I'm most excited about the general Internet of Things. And I really see how, if we look at how we viewed uh, uh, files or documents that uh, if, I, if my laptop broke, I lost every all my writing. And then with Google Drive now, everything kind of just exists in the cloud. I see that we're moving in the same direction with Internet and of Things in terms of communication and mobile communication. I'm no longer going to be focused on chatting primarily from my phone, but rather my television, my watch, my glasses, my car, maybe even my microwave. These are all going to be part of the messaging experience that I have, almost as this, uh, this um, magical genie that follows me and just is listening to me all the time. And, and, and so how does that work as a business model for you guys? So what branded content? I mean, what's the, what's the, the obvious answers to that? Well, well from the, the brand's perspective, I think allowing brands to connect, to, tar to target specific users and develop relationships with them in a scalable manner with clear call to actions that then have a clear return on investment where they can make money or have their closed transactions that this is going to be very powerful within the messaging space. And we're already seeing it on many of the messengers that are, that are in the forefront today. Um, do, are you enough of a bull about messaging to see it? I mean, obviously among certain communities, young people, it's, it's very, very, very big and very strong. Is it, is it going to push, take some of the air away of, from, say, email? I think so. I think that the latency involved in email is a killer. It is just eventually something that people are not going to be comfortable waiting for a response. The lack of presence, the lack of uh, an initial feedback, the file format of it with the, the, the headers and the footers and kind of that thread that you build with uh, you know, all those lines that end up if you 
been forwarded a forward of a forward. So all of these kind of legacy elements of email are being repaired in the next generation communication, which is messaging. But how about the, the balkanization? This is one of the things that irritates me about messaging is not remembering who's on what. If I want to talk to you, the nice thing about email is I don't have to worry about whether you're on Gmail it's or ubiquitous. Yahoo. It's ubiquitous. Everybody gets it. Everybody's got it. How do you, it just seems like the messaging world is fragmenting in so many, you know, if I were, let's say I were a marketer, well, I'm gonna be restricted to the universe of Glide users, or I'm gonna be restricted to the universe of Snapchat. I mean, it's, it's kinda not very pleasant to have to build for 16 different things. So how do you see that playing out? I do see eventually that there will be a convergence, but I think that, uh, I think what you're expressing the frustration, and I think it's accurate, is that we are uh, pretty far away, meaning within the lifetime of uh, the, the circles of evolution of technology, before we'll really see a convergence. And that's a great thing because it allows for innovation like Glide. If right. there was only space for one messenger in the market, then you wouldn't be able to really push the envelope and try new things and experiment and fail quickly. Is, is anybody working on a kind of a consolidated message reader that would allow you to, you know, work in, just pick, well, oh, let's send a Snapchat message to Boom and we get all in a single environment rather than having to have 16 apps on your phone? Yes and no. I've definitely seen, you know, one every, I think there's an XKCD that I remember from a few years back where they showed, oh, what if we had one, there's 14 different standards. What if we made one standard that covered them all? And then next year they say, there's 15 different standards. What if we had one to cover them all? That every attempt that I've at least seen to converge them has had real challenges gaining any type of traction. But that's, I mean, for, again, from a marketer point of view, that's a barrier. I mean, you know, the nice thing about television was you had the 30-second spot. Everybody made 30-second spots. Done. Well, that's only, you're talking about the last mile. The last mile could be very distributed, but from the brand or content distributor's perspective, it could be very unified. You could envision platforms that you create content in one location, and then that's distributed to your users among a plethora of channels. What do you use your, I mean, I, I don't know how much discussion there's been of wearables here, and I haven't been to all the sessions. What do you think about, say, the Apple Watch as a device? What do you use it for? So mainly what I use it is to stay far away from my cell phone. I find that I get about 500, 600 notifications a day. and on there's your phone. On my phone. And between everything from Facebook Messenger to WhatsApp to Slack to the, the news, it's, it's, information's always constantly coming in. And we have this Pavlovian response to stop what we're doing in the real world and to go into our pocket or to our purses and see what was that so vibration. What's, what's, what do you get on your Apple Watch? With my Apple Watch, I can quickly and efficiently determine whether what is the priority of this incoming notification and then be able to determine whether or not I should interrupt my interaction with the real world to then jump into my virtual world. So now, instead of pausing every time I get a notification, I pretty much only pause if I got an SMS from my wife or uh, you know, a fire email or something equivalent. So you're still getting all the same streams coming in, but it, I, I, how do you sort them out in that little teeny well, it's, uh, as they're flowing in, the, the barrier of just taking a, a glance at your wrist is far lower than getting up or walking over to your desk and checking your phone. Now, what are you, you're all cloud-based, right? So yep. that means that you can watch all uses. You know a lot about what your users are. What's the typical use case for a Glide user today? Well, it's primarily uh, small groups of people that have pre-existing relationships. And family is a great use case. Uh, couples is another great use case. And what do they do? They'll just like once a day, mom will get on and send a message to everybody. Well, like kids. Actually, the average Glide user that's uh, sending messages is sending 17 videos a day. So and what's it's the typical duration. Uh, about 30 seconds. So what we see from that is that people really enjoy and become accustomed to video at the speed of texting. It's more personal, it's more convenient, and it's easier to really express yourself through video, through face-to-face -face messaging, as opposed to typing with your thumbs. Now, if Evan Spiegel were here, he'd say, well, Snapchat does that really easy, really fast. Why Snapchat's a fabulous product, but it's not exactly in the traditional communication utility space. 
And that's really the space that we're trying to own from the video messaging perspective. Snapchat does a, a great job at being able to share stories, being able to consume content. And the fact that all the messages just disappear also lowers people's barrier. But that's a very different use case than when you want to have a group chat with your family that maybe your mother's in Florida, your brother's in Albany, and your sister's in St. Louis. Everybody has children, and now how do the children maintain an impactful relationship with each other? Yeah, I mean, many know, we, I think WeChat, most of the messaging services do have a video component. How is what you do different from them? Well, everybody else either goes for one or two directions. Either you have live video calling, which is very difficult to organize. It's something that happens at best on a weekly basis. For most people, it's on a monthly basis. Skype. Yeah, Skype is a great example. That Google Hangouts. And then on the other end, you have store and forward, which is, you could consider that more like a video voicemail. If I'm gonna record on iMessage a one minute video, or if I'm going to record on my phone a three minute video and then try and email that to you, or WhatsApp, WhatsApp that to you, it's gonna take somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes before you can actually watch that on your phone. Uh -huh. So that's not really a communication. That's kind of a, that's a, a, a cherry on top to another form of communication. It's, a, it's almost an addition to text communication. But it's too slow to really be the kind of ping pong, almost a video walkie talkie, real time experience that Glide provides. So how do you market Glide? It's uh, mostly through uh, word of mouth. Just uh, friends that understand our value proposition and want to have uh, close relationships with people in their life and bring those relationships closer will invite their friends and family to join the application and then create either one-on-one -on -one chats or group chats with their family and friends. And if somebody were a brand, how would you mean, I mean again, you've got the adoption problem. I mean, again, you know, how, how do you, it's chicken and egg obviously, but how do you get this, aside from coming here and talking to this crowd, how do you get Glide in front of the marketing world? Well, so we've actually experimented internally uh, with uh, various VIP channels, which would allow content creators or influencers or brands to be able to build an audience and then communicate either in a, a massive uh, a message to the whole audience or one-off based on various criteria or segmentation of the audience. And so, the, again, it's uh, very early, and we're a young company. You know, we've been uh, downloaded about 25 million times now, primarily in North America. So we have a long way to grow before we really capitalize on any type of VIP or brand-based channel. Average of 17 a day. Yep. That, that's, that's heavy usage, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, what we hear from our users is that they have pretty much abandoned text messaging. And, we, and what we're excited about... Well, abandoned text yep. messaging, at least to the people that are yep. in their... Absolutely. You're never going to kill text because it's so valuable for so many use cases, but it does have limitations that now we've overcome with advancements in technology. What's the biggest single group of Glide users that you can see that talk to each other? You know, is there, are there companies that use it in turn? I mean, how, how big can you get? Is there a limit? Well, so the group chats are currently limited to 50 in a group chat, which we're expanding, I believe, to 200 in the next, uh, I believe, in the upcoming weeks. And internally, what we use it as an organizational tool is we run all of our product meetings through, or many of our product meetings and brainstorming sessions through Glide, which is, you can think of it like a, a long-winded or long-tailed uh, video conference. So someone in San Francisco might wake up and then see an hour and a half of footage of a brainstorming session that came out of uh, our marketing department or product department. See, those are not time limited. Well, it's time limited to each individual message, but the total content is unlimited. And it doesn't take up any room on your phone, so you never have to worry about any storage constraints. So, and this is, so this is, this is technologically difficult. Yeah, this, it's actually the technology we've been working on for about seven years now, and we released it as a consumer application a little over two years ago. And do you see adoption, I mean, how why don't you just get a brand and use it? Could you do that? Have you tried? So we're, we're still laser focused on the pure consumer to consumer play, but at the same time, we're open to doing some small tests, and that's really what we've been doing. I think what uh, one of the things that I heard from the, the, your uh, previous interview uh, 
is with uh, OnePlus is that you have to be focused on what you're doing to really be able to excel at it. So how do we, how do we, we all go to the App Store and it's iOS, Android? iOS, Android, and uh, coming up, uh, yes. Yeah. Does the watch have its own store? The watch does have its own store, right? but you do currently need a companion app on how, your phone. How many Apple Watch users out there? We can't even see. Anybody? Not, not a whole time. A few. All right. Well, on that triple note, we are out of time. So head over to the Apple Store or the Android Store and get yourself glad. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you. Okay, up next is our panel, which is titled Why Targeted Advertising Technology.